In this video, we will explore and analyze the abstract paintings of Patrick Wilson and look at the ways in which he creates his artwork. We will also look at one painting by Pete Mondrian as a comparison of the works of one of the first geometric abstract artists with the modern artist. By the end of the video, I hope to have given you a thorough overview of Patrick Wilson and some of his paintings. Patrick Wilson is an American abstract painter born in Redding, California. He received his Master's of Fine Arts degree at Claremont Graduate School in 1995. Wilson is based in Los Angeles, California. Wilson's works are painted in the style of geometric abstraction as his painting consists of only squares and rectangles overlapping each other with differing layers of opacity. His application of acrylic colors onto the canvas is done using drywall trowels, paint rollers, and masking tape. This technique allows him to lay down thin layer after thin layer of paint to give his paintings almost no texture between them. As he works, he responds diligently as the arrangement evolves after each layer is added to canvas. The subsequent works are suggestive of the wide open deserts, beaches, and skies of Southern California. Wilson usually has more than one canvas that he is working on at any given time. When he hits a roadblock on one canvas, he moves over to another. Wilson cleverly titles his exhibitions such as Slow Motion Action Painting at the Marks and Zavaretto in San Francisco, California. The nature of Wilson's paintings is everything that abstract art stands for. With abstract art, the subject of the work is based on what you see, the colors, the shapes, the brush stroke, the size, the scale, and in some cases, the process itself, as in action painting. Romeo, painted in 2010, is measured at only 17 inches by 17 inches, but is packed with plenty for the eyes to see. In this work, the main background colors are differing shades of reds and purples, while the eye is drawn towards the blues of the background of the smaller squares a little off center of the canvas, and the oranges and browns that fill that area. You can see the outlines of colors interwoven throughout the work over the background colors that show that these were Wilson's finishing touches. The fact that he uses only rectilinear forms in this piece shows his urban environment in his works. The concrete jungle of urban living is built into little squares and this comes out. The details of the squares and the gradient shading of the purple background brings the colors to life. They are not all just colored squares, some of them have a translucent layer over the top with a slightly different color than below. The title of this painting, along with the reds and purples that dominate the canvas, bring a sense of longing to the viewer, making their heart light. The colors on the canvas feel as though it is a heart beating, with the blues being the vein bringing blood back, and the reds pumping new blood out of the body to be used. Sea Ranch, painted in 2018, is one of Wilson's newest paintings, measuring slightly larger than Romeo at 22 inches by 22 inches. In this work, Wilson painted a seascape using dull colors of green, blue, and browns. The dull colors make the viewer relaxed as if they are sitting on a beach somewhere gazing out over the ocean. The earth tones of the painting bring a calming effect. The subtle color changes in the green and brown areas transition well into each other, giving them an almost seamless transition from one to the other at the tops of the squares. Once again, the painting has rectilinear outlines throughout the canvas. However, in this painting, the outline sometimes disappears behind other shapes and re-emerge on the other side. The composition and arrangement of the different colors make it seem as though you might be gazing down at a tide pool at low tide, with the top of the canvas being the ocean side and the bottom forming the clear waters in the rocks and sands of the tide pool. One could imagine ocean life moving around as little rectangles throughout the larger rectangles to help bring this canvas to life. Insomniac, painted in 2010, is the biggest of the three paintings I am examining at 72 inches by 67 inches. This work utilizes mostly primary and secondary colors with a small amount of grays and whites breaking up the color slightly throughout. The main focus is the bronze and bright blue squares in the bottom of the canvas. 
these draw your attention away from the other blues and grays around it to the more complex and densely packed section of squares, outlines, and tonal shifts in color. This work is playful with its bright colors and the fact that its arrangement almost makes you feel as though you are staring into a tunnel at a position that is a little off center of the entrance. The bronze could be the light on the other side of the tunnel very faintly shining through. If the name has anything to do with the feeling of the painting, then the meaning of this painting could be just that, the light at the end of the tunnel. The fact that you cannot sleep and you know day is coming as you slowly walk down a sleepless tunnel towards daybreak. The dark colors of the canvas are the little amounts of sleep you have gotten between the bright colors of insomnia. Wilson can be compared to Pete Mondrian and his abstract squares. Composition A by Mondrian in 1920 is a work that I selected to show the formal qualities that can be seen, although at this point Mondrian had reduced his palette to the three primary colors. Although Wilson's work is even more abstract than Mondrian's, you can see the same overlapping rectilinear patterns in both artists' painting. Mondrian was one of the first abstract painters that used only squares in his paintings. Because of the precision of all of Wilson's lines, you could almost suggest that he makes his work digitally or mechanically. One could compare his works to open screens on a computer, however, the artist is less interested in visual metaphors for media interfaces, and more interested in the intersections of landscape, process, and time. The square has been used in art for over a century, starting with Cubism around 1907. Artist Kazimir Malevich declared, The square is the icon of reductivism. He treated it as a work of sacred art. Mondrian stated in Pure Abstract Art in 1929, Just as pure abstract art is dogmatic, neither is it decorative. Superficially it may appear decorative, but of the simplicity of its means. What may seem decorative can be pure art, while painting can be merely decorative. I believe Wilson's works will turn out to be among the greats. You can put Wilson among the more recognized painters of history such as Piet Mondrian and Joseph Albers. While these two artists are some of the best that painted squares, Wilson is rivaling them in his technique and form. His command of color, combined with the precise lines that are present in all of his works, make every painting unique. If you look at one of his works, you can instantly recognize the key features that make these his. Some of his paintings are already selling for tens of thousands of dollars, and they will only go up in price as the years roll along. The abstract squares of Patrick Wilson are only going to get better as the artist matures. I look forward to seeing what Wilson will produce for a long time to come.